the householder, my parents, Boyd and Stephanie Householder, started working in what is known as the trouble teen industry in the early 90s. Um, they started at a place in Florida. Eventually, they moved to Missouri. And then in 2006, they opened up their own place called Circle of Hope Girls Ranch in Humansville, Missouri. Okay. And so what school did you go to? By the way, the, the sound's working better now. So maybe it's just because you're closer to the camera or something. I don't know. <clears throat> I didn't go to it. Uh, my parents, uh, like I said, my parents uh, started working in a school in Florida, um, in Tampa, Florida. At first, it was called Faith Children's Home. Um, and then it changed to Hope Children's Home. And then in 2001, my parents, uh, Boyd, my father, Boyd, started working at a all boys boarding school in uh, Stockton, Missouri called Agape. Um, and they worked there from 2001 to 2006. And then in 2006, they opened up their own school in a uh, human field called Circle of Hope. So I was not um, a student of one of these places. I was a staff child of owners of these places. Um, but in 2020, uh, we took to TikTok and exposed Circle of Hope and Agape. Um, and eventually Agape closed down, but Circle of Hope closed down in 2020. Uh, and my parents, Boyd and Stephanie, are in, um, they're not in jail right now, they're on house arrest, but their trial starts November 27th. Okay, are you still in, in con like, do you still talk to your parents, or? I haven't talked to my parents. Uh, I want to say uh, it would have been because my bro my little brother was still there. I would say probably 2017 was like the last time I talked to them, but it wasn't really talking to them. It was more talking to my younger brother. Okay. Um. <clears throat> okay. How do I want to go about this? Um. <clears throat> how did they first learn about the school? Do you know that? So. Uh, my mom and dad were very, um, I don't know if you know what Independent Fundamental Baptist um, is, it's a religion. And my mom and dad were involved with the Independent Fundamental Baptist. Um, and I think what happened was Tampa, Florida, the school um, came out and was singing at one of the churches and the guy got up and preached and like had a sob story on how they needed staff. And so that's how my mom and dad went down and started working. I wanna say that was like, 93 I, I was like two i was really young so um i don't really know the full story i can just tell you what i was told and that's what uh how was your childhood like how was growing up let's just start there okay, so um in the independent fundamental baptist it is very encouraged that a black body better than a uh, black heart, or sorry, a red bottom is better than a black heart. And so um, from a very, very young age, we were beaten. Uh, I don't know how deep, um, but it, it was, it was physical and emotional abuse from the moment I was born. Okay, did you grow up with your parents or did you get taken out of the household? No, I grew up with my parents, I did. I think okay. Was there ever any like CPS called or anything like that for the abuse or? So um, when I was, I, it was when the, the, the school came out and uh, was preaching to my parents' church, my grandma had contacted CPS on my parents because uh, my dad would beat us until we would leave. And so one night she had enough and she contacted CPS. The police did come out and investigate. Um, but me and my siblings were heavily brainwashed to believe that that is that's normal. Like that's how if you're bad, you're you're supposed to be punished that way. And so we uh, refused to talk to CPS. And I guess uh, the case was dropped. And that's when my parents ended up going and working for the school. Okay. Um, do, do, when did you like? How old were you when you realized what these schools really were? Did, was it like when you were older, or did you kind of catch on? Or, or like younger or how did that it's confusing because it was I, my whole childhood i was brainwashed so something inside me i didn't agree with it um uh, i was 10 years old when i first uh, attempted to commit suicide um i want to say i was probably eight when i ran away for the first time um when my parents opened up the school in humansville i ran away with two of their students uh third month something in me 
felt it was wrong, but I also, when I would get brought back, I would also be punished more and taught that this is normal. And so um, it took me until I had my own kids to realize that I would never treat my kids that way. And that's, that's when I was willing to openly admit and publicly say, this is what my parents are doing, this is wrong, uh, something needs to be done. Um, and that was in 2012. Okay. <clears throat> Have people ever given you, um, or like shit or anything like that for having parents that worked in the industry? Like, have, has anybody ever tried to put you in a box for that? Uh, multiple, multiple times, but I, to be honest, I understand because um, I can't say I went through what you guys went through because it was completely different. You guys were being abused like you didn't know. Um, whereas I was going through the same kind of punishments, but for me, that's all I knew. And so, um, I get the disconnect, uh, but I don't want, I want people to understand that I, I never thought or felt like I was a trouble teen survivor. I just felt that my parents were an issue and I could, I could do something about it. And that's all I wanted to do was come forward and out and say, this is wrong. Uh, but I don't, I don't blame for that if I get it. I understand because I didn't. I wasn't ripped away from my family. It was my family doing the punishments. So. Yeah, but at the same time, you were still suffering abuse. And I think it's a, an important distinction to make to people that just because parents are involved in something, doesn't ref, it shouldn't reflect on the child because the child has nothing to do with it. If anything, they're an un, unwilling or unwilling participant in whatever the parents are doing or whatnot. <clears throat> so. Um, I just wanted to point that out for people. Um, let's see, did you, I, I know you went, never went to a program, but uh, did they like try and bring the program like structure type thing back in the household? Like, were you like, did you have like really strict rules? Like, did they? Yes, uh, but um, so the first time in Florida, there wasn't like, like it wasn't like a golf or surf folk. It was more of a, uh, a root home. I don't know how to explain it. Like you could, you could be an individual. You could dress a certain way. Like as if you were a female, you could dress a way you wanted to, as long as it was modest. But you could wear a, a t-shirt that had like uh, guns and clothes on it. Like that. Uh, but when, um, so when we were there, it was a little more lenient. I was allowed to have games. Uh, I I was allowed to do shorts and things like that. Uh, but I was still being a uh, we forgot that that's when like the structure abuse, I guess. I don't know how to explain it. My dad was military and so there was always military abuse within my family. So when we got to Gothe, we were like everyone there was abusing everyone and so my dad could get away with it more. And so um I wasn't I wasn't demoted or anything like that. Um I didn't have a shirt system. Um but I was treated very badly. Okay. <clears throat> Did they ever bring you up to the facilities at all? Did you ever get to see any of the facilities? Yeah, so um, my parents worked at Agape. Agape, they housed like 200 boys. Uh, the girls were not allowed to look at the boys or talk to the boys, but we would all eat dinner in the same area. We all. I, can, I know Colton Strog, I know uh, Brett Harper, I know um, James Ruski and Sean Markley and all of those people because of the fact that we all live within close quarters, even though we weren't allowed to talk. Uh, once I got out and we had Facebook, we all became like super close friends, but uh, it, it wasn't, uh, I got to see what they went through. And then once I got to see what was going on at Agape. It kind of hit me that we were all kind of in a fucked up situation. Um, Circle of Hope, I was, a, I, I wasn't willingly a staff, but I was used as a staff. And so um, I did have to implement the rules and things like that. Um, there are multiple people that I can tell you that I treated badly. Um, we talked today still talk and I've apologized for everything. Uh, I can tell you that our kids are real 
Um, but I will tell you this, that the restraining, I refused to restrain um, because that, that was, um, it was that, that was hard. Like, that was, I mean, getting someone pushes is hard, especially if you're an adult now, but that, that was like, I, 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 it's hard, but like, there, I don't know how to explain it. Um, being part of strength, and if you're not this properly, that, um, I, I refuse to do this. Um, and so I would just go downstairs and cook in the kitchen or do something. Like, I would make myself. I wanted, I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. So you were, so you, you went to this, these schools, but you were more staff, staff. Yeah. So you weren't, okay. I, I understand now. Okay. <clears throat> so did you staff seminars or anything like that? Did they have you staff, staffing or do they even have seminars at, at, um, they didn't have that. Okay. Not, not at, uh, Agape no, uh, Florida, the, in Florida, they had seminars for the ACE program, which is Accelerated Christian Education. And mom dad went to those. I never did. I was, I was 10 when we left that school. Um, I was 10 when we got to Agape. Their seminars were basically just church services. It, it wasn't seminars, but I did have to go to the school. Okay. Uh, you said 10 years old you were working at Agape? I did not work at Agape. Agape, I was a staff child. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But you were 10 when that happened? Okay. Did, did they compensate you for being a staff? No? Okay. Um, kind of interesting how they could get away with actually making you work. That's kind of crazy. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's not legal, is it? No, it's not legal. But when you're raised to believe, like, you have to do what your parents tell you to do, you do it. So. Yeah, 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 of course. A staff. Uh, 15 when I ran away. So. Um, what was the worst thing you, what was the, was there anything positive, was there any positive experiences that you had at either of these places? And what was the most negative experience that you had at both of these places or that you saw or witnessed or heard about? Um, the most positive thing, uh, there wasn't really anything positive happening then, uh, but the most positive thing is the relationship made after. Um, I have, Friends that I will always be friends with because of what we went through. Um, I the, the most negative thing is to see how they treat humans, but not not just any human, um, children. But it, um, a lot of the times, um, at Agape and Circle of Hope, most of the time the children that were struggling mentally the most were the ones that were picked on. The worst, and that that was the hardest part is watching them relentlessly pick on kids that were not capable of handling, like controlling their emotions mentally. Um, at Circle of Hope, uh, my parents got a girl. Her name is Rachel Kelso. Um, she, I want to say she was 17 when they got her because I was 16 and she was a year older than me. Uh, she, I can't tell you her her um, diagnosis, but she is developmentally delayed, and she, um, I would say she acted. Like through brain capacity, was an eight year old at most. Uh, she was picked on the most. Uh, she was restrained multiple times uh, for hours. Um, and that was probably the hardest thing. But the thing that, that broke, um, it like breaks your heart because she couldn't control her emotions. She was sad, she would cry. And my dad hated crying. He couldn't cry. He couldn't feel any sort of any like negative emotion and she would be strained for that. But <laughs> look at every single one of the girls that had because she understood that we had to, that if you were student you had to restrain. You had no fucking choice. You had to restrain. Um but she would stand up and she would look at you and she would smile and then she would give you like her muscles like showing you that she was strong. Um but uh that was the hardest thing was like watching how they treated the Okay. Um, what, um, let's see. Uh, and both of these were like more religious based, right? Well, uh, my parents went to, yeah. Um, one thing I do want to say about Rachel, um, she was 17 when she got there and, uh, she did not leave their school until 2020. She was, I want to say 30, but she was there as an adult. Um, 
because her parents signed over the custodianship to my parents. And so my parents got the keeper until 2020. And if we didn't say anything about it, she would still be there today. Yeah, that's that's crazy. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, did you see any, like, corruption or, like, when you were there, since you were, like, more of a staff, like, did you see any, like, like, I'm more thinking, like, did you ever see, like, any staff members using drugs, um, like, sexually, like, grooming any of the kids? Uh, did you see anything like that? I can't say I saw any staff members using drugs. Um, there was rumor that staff were using steroids and giving steroids to the students. I did not see that. Um, I did witness a staff PD and then a student come out of the room, and you can only assume what was happening then. So that did happen. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, I saw, the, the most important thing was uh, my dad was, like I said, he was military. Uh, my brother was a police officer in the town about 30 minutes from Stockton, and that was El Dorado. Um, when I was there, no one was, besides my brother, no one was in department, uh, but they were really good friends with the sheriffs. Um, eventually, once I did see uh, Robert Graves and a couple of other staff from Agape um, deputies in that, that town. Um, but what I, what I witnessed growing up was the grooming for that to happen. Uh, my dad would give um, sharp shooting lessons to the sheriff in Humansville and in stuff. So basically, uh, they were grooming the sheriff's department to become, to implement themselves in the sheriff's department, make it harder for us to even do anything eventually. Uh, yeah. Which is in 2020, it made it almost impossible for us to get anything done because anytime we contact Robert's daughter who was dispatched to tell us, oh, call back at this time. And then we would never, it, it was just, they would always get circles, like roundabout circles. It wasn't until one deputy in that that reached out to me for TikTok and said he wanted to help. And he put his job on the line and he told me, like, Amanda, he's like, they're going to hang me out to dry. Basically, that job. Well, he's no longer. Yeah, so do, what did they do? Suspend him without pay? I'm not sure. All I know is he's no longer a deputy there, and I can guarantee I would be willing to put money on it. It was because he went through, not only did he go through and like help us with the circle of hope, he helped us with the agape, which is one thing that they, they didn't want to um, touch. But I begged him, I was like, I have multiple students from agape that will be willing to give you a statement. Can you please do the same for us him, that you did for us? And he did. And then a couple of months later, he hit me up and he's like, I'm no longer a deputy there. And I was like, figure that would happen <laughs> okay that's fucking well at least he tried to help that's awesome he helped if it wasn't for him and Catherine Skokek of that Cedar County uh Republican Republican uh news station we wouldn't have gotten anything done uh because Catherine put her she's no longer part of that news, newspaper either she lost her job but because she was willing to put her job on the line and put one little article on circle of hope in there uh, that's when the Kansas City Star saw what was happening and was like, no, we're going to fucking investigate this. So. Right on. Well, shout out to them. Kudos to them. Um, the Circle of Hope, uh, was that more, I know it was religious based, but like, how would, how would you graduate there? Like, was it a points and levels thing? Was it just like when they decided you were ready or like, what was the. So that's, <laughs> it's hard to describe my dad. And it's all based on how my dad was feeling. If my dad was having a bad day and uh, he was like, oh, okay, you've been here long enough, you can go home, then he decide. Or if he was having a bad day and even though he was feeling good, he would knock me down from a red shirt to a black shirt. <laughs> that a lot. Um, and the, the, the really shitty thing would be if my mom didn't like you, she would pick on you and pick on you and pick on you until you did something to lose your status. Um, but it was not, it was never really truly based on how well you were doing. It was truly based on how emotionally my parents were feeling that day. Okay. Um, let's see. 
Um, did you ever, <clears throat> did you like, uh, I, I know you said you made some mistakes and you were a little mean, but like, did you ever like, uh, do you feel like you were able to help some people? Like for me, like I, I rebelled my first year at Spring Creek Lodge. So by the time I got into the upper levels, I was like more of a, I knew what it was felt like to like be picked on. So like, did you, so I like would, would coach people and like mentor them, like to get, kind of take them under my wing. Like, did you do any of that sort of thing? Or like, was it more you were just programmed and like just doing what you were told to do? It's a mix of both because of how um, doggy dog world it was. Um, there were higher shirts that if you did anything. Uh, I gave some, uh, someone extra food. Well, here, here's a good story or a good example. Uh, my parents used to speak all the time about how women, if you were wearing pants, you were going to die and go to hell and burn for eternity. Uh, my parents had a five-year-old girl, and um, Isabella was her name, and um, she she was uh, my little uh, little. I don't know how to like. I was her guide basically. Uh, <laughs> Hey, and she's like, I don't want my mom to go to hell. And I was like, why, why are you thinking your mom's going to go to hell? She's like, my mom wears pants. And so I looked at her and I said, um, well, if your mom's going to hell for wearing pants, then my, my dad's mom is in hell <laughs> for wearing pants. My sister's in hell for wearing pants. And my dad's sister's in hell for wearing pants. One of the girls um, overheard that and thought they would get out of trouble or thought that they could get promoted and went and told my parents and that's actually why I was kicked out and I was 17 at the time and so I was kicked out from the school because I was going against what their teaching were um and so that that could that kind of tells you like yes I had power tricks I did what um you had to to survive but at the same time like I went against what they said is such a thing. okay um <clears throat> then after you got kicked out of the place uh was it like at the time what, did it feel like a relief you're like oh thank god finally uh, or was it like uh were you kind of upset for getting let go because you were so brainwashed and um at that time i was i was crazy. um it was supposed to be and so i honestly was getting married to whoever the fuck i did to get out there and the fact that they kicked me out at 17, I was so relieved because I didn't have to marry anyone to get out of there. Um, and so, um, yeah, I was, it, it was, it was the best thing that ever happened. I was excited. Okay. And what did you, what did you, <clears throat> what did you end up doing after you stopped working there? Like how, how uh, did you, did it affect you right away? Or did it take like years for things to sink in and be like, oh shit, I, I was like, a, I was bad sometimes or like uh like how much did how long did it take after you got out to fully realize like um like how much did it affect you and that it was wrong and whatnot or did you know that it was wrong when you were in there in that time? i kind of knew it was wrong when you were, but that's the whole group i can't just i can't explain it other than like part of me felt it was wrong but i was so brainwashed to believe it was it was right that no matter how many times i spoke out and said hey this is what's happening to me at home. I would be like, oh, well, you did something wrong. You deserved it. And then I would be sent back home and I would just be punishment if not worse. And so, um, part of it was wrong. Uh, but when I got out, um, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't reflect on any of it. Uh, I was fucked up. I'll say that I had a lot of emotional problems and I still do to this day, but I did not understand any of it until I had my kids and it took um, having my kids to realize that no it was wrong no matter how much anyone wants to say no you deserved it like if we were good kids they wouldn't have done that to us um, because there's nothing <laughs> nothing a child can do uh, that warrants them to be fed their own vomit or warrants them to be beaten until they're black and blue and bleeding um, it took me holding a little child, my, my own little child to realize nothing that little baby innocent human could ever do. I would, would ever, ever be okay with someone treating them that way. Uh, so it took my, me having my own kids for it to be like, uh, no, no, it is wrong. Um, but deep down inside, uh, I, I was always running away from it. 
if that makes sense. Like there was something inside of me knew that there was something better out there. Um, and so I can't explain it other than I was brainwashed and it took having kids for the blinds to be like, oh no, you wouldn't let someone do that to your kids. So why is it okay for someone to do that to you or to other kids? Exactly, exactly. Um, so you probably deal with a lot of guilt from just stopping it, right? Do you still deal with guilt from that? I I think it's uh, um, no matter what, I can't change it was parent, even though it wasn't my decision. Um, I can't change it. I, I wish. I, I the other night I had a, a girl reach out to me that was a former former survivor, and it I get reached out to because I can understand what they go through. Um, but I also don't, I don't think people understand that when I hear everything that they went through and it's okay, it kills me. Um, even though I lived it, it fucking kills me because um, I was a child, you know, and it was just, it, I don't, I would never hit my child like that, but I was a child. It was their right to treat <coughs> for their other people's kids is like I don't know it's just hard and to like listen to um to it because it happened it happened years so sorry um happened for years after and it, it took me a long time it took me at least five years to see if be like oh shit I don't want to let someone do this because it took me five years to have my son I it, 2012 is when I had my son and that's when I was just like. Okay. Um, <clears throat> health wise, health wise, how, how has staffing affected your life? Like to this day, like what do you struggle with the most? Um, I have severe PTSD and depression. Uh, I'm getting better. Uh, 2023, I think a lot of in my life. The thing I, I struggle with. Um, in 2021, I attempted five times. Uh, thank God I'm still here, but that's the thing I struggled with. Could you repeat the last part? Oh, um, the suicidal tendencies or um, in 2021? The in 2021. In 2021. Uh, but I'm still here. But that's the Okay, it was like cutting out that whole section. I don't know why it, it like works hella good, and then it'll be super clear, and then it'll cut out. For so, what was it in twenty twenty one? What happened? In twenty twenty one, I attempted to commit suicide five times. Obviously, I'm still here, so it didn't work. But uh, that is what I struggle with the most: is suicidal um, tendencies. Okay, suicidal tendencies and depression um, and PTSD. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's see. Do you, okay, so you don't really talk to your parents. Uh, have you, uh, do you think you could ever forgive your parents for what they did? Like, for me, like, I've forgiven my parents, but I'll never forget what they did. But, like, I know you're probably not on the best terms with your parents, but do you think you could ever, like, forgive them and just, like, for, but never forget it? Or where are you with that? I got in so much trouble on TikTok for saying this. But I've already forgiven my parents, and a lot of um, a lot of what. So in early when I was kicked out, I started learning about cult. I started learning about uh, mental health. I started learning about childhood trauma, and um, from there I started realizing my dad and mom were had pretty shitty childhoods too. Not excusing them, um, but i can relate to what they went through um i when i had my son um i thanked him uh, and that was one time i thanked him and he refused to do it ever again but i can um my dad i swear to god my son has ptsd he's not diagnosed but i swear to god he does because i can understand how i i don't know how to explain it i have ptsd and i can get i get him i get how he would get so frustrated and flustered but the difference between him and I is I had the um, a, the, the strength to say this is right. I'm not going to take this out on kids. 
Um, and so I can relate to my parents a lot. I just would become my parents. And so, yes, I have given them. And no, I will never forget what they did. But um, I had to forgive them to be able to um, do any kind of healing. Otherwise, I would still, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm still, I have a ton of healing to go through. Uh, but I'm, I'm happy with what I'm at is what I'm trying to say. And a lot of that is because I had, I had to forgive my parents and I had to understand them, I guess. Okay. Yeah, I think it's an important <coughs> step to like, because, and another thing I want to point out is that just because you're forgiving something doesn't mean you have to forget it. But I feel like holding on to that animosity, it, it only like drains you like when I hold on to like anxiety or like stress or anger anger is a big one like anger will drain your body like really fast so just like uh just a suggestion for people if you can if you can work it out with your parents and just you know just say you know I, I'll never forget what you did but you know I forgive you and you're only trying to do your best and I also know that some parents are just complete pieces of shit and just sent their kids there for just because they didn't want them and those parents you know fuck it but uh uh, for the most part, unless you can find it in your heart to forgive them. And if you can, you're a bigger person than me, probably. But um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, if you could, uh, or let's see. Um, how was the food there at both places? Was it horrible? Was it decent? Was it was it good? Like, I can't answer on the circle of hope food because I was the cook. <laughs> so you'd have to ask someone else. I thought it was decent. But I, I would work with what was donated. Agape, it was it, it depended on who was cooking at agape. It could be good and it it, it could be bad. So um, I've heard that there were bugs in the cereal. I wasn't I didn't eat the breakfast at agape. Um, I only ate lunch and dinner there, but I heard there was like bugs in the cereal. And so from what I've heard there it was pretty crappy sometimes there too. Okay. And did they have solitary confinement at <laughs> Agape or Circle of Hope? Um, at Agape, I can't speak on it. I knew they had an isolation room where they, or not an isolation room. Um, it's what they call the padded palace, and that's where they would take them and restrain them. But I can't say I ever personally witnessed someone being isolated at Agape, but I wasn't, they didn't do all the punishments around me. I was just a staff child there. I've heard people speak on it, um, but it's not my, my story to tell, so I can't say yes or no. Uh, Circle of Hope, when I was there, they did not have isolation, um, but I found out, um, my mom called me one day telling me that they were taking my old um, office because I would do uh, receipts, I would file the receipts and do a lot of the paperwork and stuff, and so uh, she was like, oh, we're taking it um, and uh, boxing it in to where there's like no window and we're going to lock girls in here for a few minutes, is what she said, like a few minutes to get them to calm down. She said it was a calm down room. And um, at that point, she was saying it was because they um, got in trouble for restraining a girl and they were like, this is going to be better than restraining them. Um, and so I don't remember what year that was, um, but it was after I left. They did they did do an isolation room. Um, I did go back in, um, I want to say 2021, and I got the <coughs> and this is the isolation room and um i interviewed a few girls for my youtube channel and they talked about the smell because girls would be locked in there for days weeks um not allowed to get out to use the restroom um so they would have to poop and pee in the corner they would vomit and so they would talk about the smell and it still smelled like that in that room um so yes there was an isolation room but not i i, I never witnessed it being used there but i do know for a fact it's there because i saw it but i also my mom told me about it okay what about like your biggest regrets from like working as a staff member <clears throat> at either of these places what's like one thing that you did that you regret the most or do you have something like that or also is there something that you did that, that maybe helped people that you're proud of i didn't willingly work there as a staff so um i i, I can't i would that i just i don't because I was a hot bitch. I didn't get to really choose that. But um, the thing I, I, I am most proud of is the fact that I did run away. One of the girls ran away and didn't come back. But the other girl and myself did get caught and got sent back. Um, that was the first time I was ever put in the program. <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't long enough to say that I would do it. So I don't talk about it. Yeah, I do think it's 
ko. The thing I would tell them is that I didn't do more then, um, but I can't I can't sit there and, and um, get mad about it because um, it wasn't me. I was I was more of a comply, 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 and at least I had it in me enough to do something about it later. But I wish I wish I could go back and do something about it then. Uh, Okay, and <clears throat> what was their procedure for when people ran, and how many people ran when you were there? It was for the first, me both and my land were the first three to run away. Um, before, <laughs> before we ran away, we were allowed to run camp. Then, the one thing, the one thing that was okay about that place was we could wear pants to sleep in, otherwise you can't wear pants. Um, but when we got caught, they found out we ran and that we were allowed to sleep in that away. Um, but the procedure was uh, usually the cops would bring the girls back if they found them, and then the girl would get demoted to a doctor and then uh, put on the wall and um, have a guide that had to follow them around for however long. Usually, if you ran away, you were treated like shit for like the few months after you ran away. Okay. Um, and do you know if they loaded people up on prescriptions there or if they took everybody off their prescription meds? Uh, how did it work at these places? Yeah, they took at Circle of Hope. I can speak on Agape. I can't. Uh, Circle of Hope, my mom and dad were heavily against any medication because if you were mentally ill, it was Satan. It wasn't. It, mm -hmm. they, didn't believe they did not believe that. PTSD was the same. They didn't believe that MDD or uh, any of that stuff, RAD, they didn't believe in any of that stuff. Uh, so they would take the kids off of their medication cold turkey. And um, most of the time, my mom, if they the girls had a headache or period cramps or anything like that, my mom would give them vitamin C and be like, oh, here's your ibuprofen. So. Okay. Um, did you see any, anybody like go through some super bad withdrawal because of that? I would say Chloe did, but um, when Chloe, uh, she was one of the first girls they got, and the one of the girl, I, the girl I ran away with, um, her withdrawal was mainly for um, cigarettes. I think she went through rehab before. Uh, they had because it was a fairly new property. They had uh, construction workers out there, and so we would just go out there and get. My parents didn't know this, but we would just go out there and find their cigarette buds and let Chloe smoke little cigarette buds. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, walk us through the day you ran away. What what happened that day? Uh, well, that wasn't the first time I ran away. That was like probably the fifth or sixth time, but that was the first time I ever got to New Mexico. Far. We got to New Mexico. Uh, the night before, Chloe um, had come to me and... Um, mentioned the fact that my dad was kind of touching her inappropriate. It didn't go any further than like um, a rope that was a little too long. Like at, in the religion, you're supposed to side hug women that are not your family. And my dad hugged her like too long in the front and that disturbed her. And so me, Chloe and Mylin, we shared, we had adjoining bedrooms. And so we just, at that point we were like, okay. Uh, and we started packing. Then that day we started filling up trash bags with everything, like all the clothes we could think of. Uh, my mom's cousin in 2004 let me go stay with her for a little bit and she bought me pants. And so uh, I had those pants hidden in my room. And so we packed those and ran away uh, that night. Uh, I had a cell phone. We called um, someone that used to flirt with me in a <laughs> grocery store in the town of Stockton. I knew his name, and so I found his number in the phone book, and we called him up, and we told him what was going on. His dad was like, you can take him to Kansas, and so he took us to Kansas, and we convinced him to take us all the way to New Mexico. And, yeah. And, yeah, once we got to New Mexico, I was frightened because I was a cult kid. I never was outside of that bubble. I was I was sheltered my whole life. Called my grandma, who's the one who contacted CPS um, on my parents. Uh, when I was young and I was like, okay, I know she, I know my grandma would have done anything she could have to taking care of me, but I also understand uh, my parents are really good manipulators. So I called her and I begged her. I was like, please, please, please come get me. Please do not 
tell mom and dad where I'm at. And uh, she called my mom and dad. And next flight, my mom or my dad and my grandma were out to New Mexico. They got me. Uh, my dad took me shopping um, and he bought me a two piece bathing suit, which was something that was a no no because you can't show skin in the IFG uh, cult. And he took me swimming. And years after <laughs> I found out, uh, as an adult, I found out he was love bombing me. So, um, it lasted a week, so. Okay. Um, if you could go back in a time machine and not be a staff at these places, uh, would you do it and why? Oh yeah, I'd like to go back in a time machine. Um, like at one point in time, I was, me and my dad were really close. Uh, my dad, um, he grew up religious. He grew up in the same place I did and he ran away. Uh, it wasn't until he met my mom that he got back into it. Um, and that was when I was, I would say, or not I, my brother was like three, so I was like one. Um, if I could, I would go back uh, two or three and I would beg my dad for leave. Because at that time, we were still really close, I think. Okay. Um, is it your belief that these places could or even, uh, should or even could be re fully regulated, or is it your belief that they should all just be shut down? I definitely think they should all be shut down. Um, I know that there are places, or there are kids who need help, uh, but just growing up in multiple different ones of these places, uh, what you're dealing with as humans, and um, even if you have a place that has never had any allegations of abuse, and it could be the perfect place, you could always get one kid that not make fun with one adult, and that adult could use their power in any way to harm their kids. So I, I, I don't. I feel like there needs to be more in-home support, and um, I just don't believe in shipping all kids. I, I do understand kids need help, but I don't. I don't think shipping them away to protect them, to prepare them. Okay. Um, is there anything else you want people to know about your experience? Maybe something that you might tell parents thinking about sending their kids to a place like this or anything like that? Um, I would say research. Um, I just, I was reached out recently from a mother who had her child in one of the schools and she this video her about how everything's monitored and she, it, it dawned on her then. She's like, oh, my son is going through the same thing that these women children went through and are still going and she got him out um but i would say research um go to tiktok there's a lot of information on tiktok a lot of podcasts um, on youtube or even spotify and apple podcasts i would dig and research because i if you really want help with your child sending them to a place that's going to traumatize them more is not going to do anything for them except make it like i wasn't even in one of these places and I have a lot of issues and it, it's not okay and I have one more question what do you think <laughs> what do you think the hardest part about uh just like the aftermath of just working at these places and all of that uh, has been for your life what do you think the thing like just the biggest effect it's had on you like, I don't I can um they because it's not working, um, but just growing up in these places, I just bad. I got a full education, and that's the hardest thing is having to relearn. Um, Fifty percent of my kids is learning how to be a mom, how to be a wife, how to help, them, how to clean. And stuff. I didn't learn a school science and English and math and things like that. Uh, so that that is probably the hardest struggle that I. Have. Oh, okay. And uh, actually, one more question. Did they have any schooling at these places? So Circle of Hope had, um, and Agape was, they used Accelerated Christian Education, which is the school of tomorrow. Um, when, it's not like this anymore, but when myself, when I was going through the schooling, um, they had comics in the in the uh, paces is what they're called, and they would segregate the students. So all the black kids went to one school, all the white kids went to one school, and all the Asian kids went to another school. Uh, so that that kind of gives you an answer, uh, idea on what kind of schooling we had. 
Okay, did you ever hear about anybody's credits like not transferring or anything like that? Was there ever? It's not, it's a non-credited program. You have to, um, you have, to, uh, once you get the, it's basically the unit of, um, if you, if you want to go to a university, you have to get credit from a uh, community college to then go to uh, the university, whatever. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, is there anything else you want to say? No, thank you for having me. Thank you for continuing to fight against the GPN. No problem. No problem. <clears throat> okay, everybody, let's keep fighting the good fight. If you've watched this far in the video, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you're feeling frisky, there's there's uh, links to the contri contributing to the podcast in the description of the video. And with that, thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day or wonderful evening wherever you guys are at. Till then, have a wonderful day. Bye.